Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to give you some advice which you can use and apply to help you land a job in iOS development. So just to give you some context, as a lead developer I've interviewed and reviewed candidates on a daily basis and these are some of the things that I feel in my opinion are important to land a role in iOS development. Now the first topic I want to start on is having a solid profile. Well what do I mean by this? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that anything interesting that you work on is in GitHub. If you build an app that interacts with an API and put it on your Git, pause. If you build an app that interacts with an API, put it on your GitHub profile to showcase it so that the person looking at you as a candidate can see your code at a glance. This means that you should make sure that your code is at the best as it could be, since this is going to be the first impression that someone sees about you and your ability. Also as well, make sure that the readme for the project has clear information about the project. So what does this include? Well, this includes what language were used, what architecture was used, features within the app, and images or videos, and videos maybe, showcasing the app. So you want to make sure that you give a detailed explanation of each one of these topics and explaining what it is that you did to show your knowledge and understanding. Now, here in the UK, we call them CVs, but in other parts of the world, you may call it a resume, but essentially it's the same thing. Now your resume is something that gives me a first impression of you. Something that I personally look for in your resume is, what do you know skill-wise? What experience do you have and how you transfer this into your side projects or your current job? Now it's worth noting that this isn't just technical skills, it could also be stuff like time management or problem solving. What are your biggest achievements? And also, I want to know a bit about you. Now, you may be wondering, I didn't focus on a degree there. And now, I personally, I'm not really someone who cares a lot about your degree. I'm more worried about your experience. And I'm someone who actually did go to university as well. And what I found is that having a degree doesn't necessarily tie your ability to, you know, how good you build apps. It's all about experience and what you've managed to experience as well. Now, although if you did go to university like me, then I would actually suggest that you list out the following. I would suggest that you list out your most recent education. So obviously if the last place you went to is university, then put down university on your profile. And within that, you wanna make sure, and within that, you wanna make sure that you include the skills that you learned there and how they translate to iOS development. So two examples of this would be a technical example of how you learned how an API worked and how you integrated it into a project with a detailed explanation over a few lines and also a non-technical example. An example of this is, let's say you worked in a group project and you had to collaborate with others in a team to get the work done. You wanna give me examples of how you worked in a team and you know how you all collaborate together successfully. Now, in my opinion, in total, your CV slash resume should not be more than two pages max because you want to get straight to the point a lot of the things a lot of these like cvs and resumes i'll be honest people are busy and are most likely going to skim read it so where applicable you probably want to use bullet points as well to make sure that people can easily you know go through all the information and skim read it if needs be now when you get into a job you're going to be part of a team so something you're going to want to get used to is actually working within a team not just on your own so now when working in a team you're more than likely going to have to use source control which is source control which is something that you 100% want to learn something i think is great and you should also con do is contribute to open source now i'll leave a link as you can see on the screen here and also in the description box to this repository but what this is is it's a great repository on github which has a list of projects that you can contribute to whether that be to fix issues add features or whatever the repo details you can do this will teach you the process of how you can actually contribute to a project since the concepts that you'll learn here are identical to how you would work in a team Moving on, for me, socializing and networking with others in this community is key. Now, if you don't know, you may actually meet someone who can improve your either life or your career just by networking, which is why networking with others should be something that you're always doing, whether that be online or via in person, such as iOS meetups or conferences or both in general. Try to make a habit to speak to as many people as possible within your field, no matter what their level is, since it can help build relations and could open up new opportunities that you did not expect. Following on from my last point, this one isn't mandatory and may never actually happen, but if it does, then jump at the top of the opportunity. So try to find a mentor. So you wanna find someone who knows more than you so you can learn best practices from them. Now, 
they're basically just your guide, just like how Iron Man helped build up Spider-Man. <laughs> you are Peter Parker. So find a mentor by following the steps in the last section by networking with others. Once you build a rapport and you like that person's vibe, then just throw it out there. Now, some people are busy and don't take it personal if you can't find someone who will give you advice outside of their work time. But if you do manage to find someone who can give you advice outside of their work time, then appreciate it and use it wisely. Now, this section may not be for everyone, but you should always do this anyway. Just like you should with your CV you should always create a solid LinkedIn profile because there are people called recruiters who will actually help try to find you a job and you can actually find roles when you open up your profile on LinkedIn using recruiters. Now someone that I know on Twitter called Steph is someone that I talk to and is really good at giving people advice on how to build up a better profile and to also improve their CVs. She actually runs this website here called Road to Tech where you can actually hire her to help you brush up your skills and brush up your profile when interviewing and sorting out your CV. So I've left a link here on the screen and I'll also leave a link in the description box so that you can contact her if you're interested. And just to let you know, I wasn't paid a dime for this so I'm actually doing this for free. <laughs> But going back to my point before about LinkedIn, you can actually let recruiters do the work for you. Now, I'll be honest, recruiters aren't 100% accurate, but you have to look at it this way. If someone will literally do the work for you or all you have to do is just swipe through the jobs that you're not interested in, why not? It's a win-win for me. You'll either get a job sent to you that you're interested in, or if you get a job that you're not interested in, then you just remove it from the pile. And if you want to learn more about how to get recruits to find you roles on LinkedIn also as well, you can check out my video where I actually show you how to set up your profile on LinkedIn to get recruits to contact you, which I'll leave a link to in this video as well. So in order to get a job, you actually need to find a job, right? Now on the screen, I've put a list of a bunch of sites that you can actually use to help you find an iOS role. Some of these sites accept candidates who only want to work remotely also. So the ones that you can see on the screen that specifically is only for remote work is remote okay. So 100% check out these sites and see if any of the roles advertised interest you. Also as well, if there's a site that I've missed, then leave a comment with a link to it in the comment section below so that other people can also check out that site as well. Now, you also wanna make sure that you know the fundamentals when applying for iOS roles. For me, some of the fundamentals that I look for in candidates, specifically juniors, is does the candidate have a basic understanding of Xcode? So do you know how to use Xcode and work your way around it? Layout, does the candidate understand how to lay out views on the screen using either Swift UI or UI kit? Does the candidate know how to perform a simple GET request and work with an API as well as decode the data? Does the candidate know how to list data from an API in a list in Swift UI or UI kit? What is the candidate's project structure like? Do you know how to structure an app using an architecture such as MVC or MVVM and understand why and how to use them? And does the candidate understand returning data back onto the main thread? So what are you like with threading? So these are things that I look for and are basically the top that I teach in a lot of the videos where I actually interact with an API and actually leave a link to a playlist which actually purely focuses on APIs and a lot of the topics that you'll actually see here which is on my channel. I'm like Mr Miyagi here with the whole wax on and wax off thing so you don't realise it but repetition is the key. In order to actually learn new things you want to make sure that you repeat these fundamentals so you have a solid understanding and know how to structure your apps so during the iOS interview, you may actually face questions about certain topics specific to iOS development. Now, if you don't know something, it's not the end of the world, but you should 100% prepare and know how to answer more common ones that usually pop up quite frequently. Now, a great resource and a way to start is with the Hacking with Swift. And there's 150 interview questions on this site, which you can use as a resource. So this site, which I'll leave a link, which you can see the link on the screen here, will actually show you the most common questions from beginner to advanced so you can actually understand which ones may come up and how you can tackle them so definitely check that out so do your research now another thing that may happen in an interview is that you may have to do pair programming or a whiteboard test now me personally i don't believe in these since in the real world no one actually sits there and watches you code so <laughs> companies do do this still and one thing that i will say about these is that the companies look to see how you approach a problem now it may be nerve-wracking when someone is literally watching you but you just need to remember that you can only do your best and present what you know so try to show 
your thought process of how you got from A to B. There's also another type of test here called a take home test. This is where you get told that you need to build a small application in a short amount of time. Now, one thing I will say about this is that when you do do these, focus on getting the fundamentals of what they ask for solid. I would only add in the bonus stuff as an additional since they want to see if you do the key things right and how you approach them. So don't approach it thinking that you need to do everything that's on the list for the take home project. Just approach it thinking that you want to do the key things that they ask for really well and if you have some more time then add it in as a bonus. Now finally it's fairly simple but you should actually ask what to expect from the interview process as well like try to get a head start on how they usually interview candidates and what steps are included during the process. You also want to learn how to sell yourself to Remember that this company has other candidates. What helps you stand out? Now, I'm not saying you need to go into the interview and be a comedian, but you really do want to sell your strengths as to why the company should hire you. And it's not just your technical skills, it's also your soft skills as well. Now, no one wants to actually work with someone who's difficult, no matter how smart you are. So if you show a bit of your personality, just be yourself and also relax as well. You also want to make sure that you present your best self to the company. Just remember, all you can do is try your best. Respect everyone in the interview, no matter what gender or race they are and the reason why is because if you're someone who actually has a bad attitude you're actually going to find it very hard to find a job just be yourself respect everyone be kind and try yourself try your best that's all you can do now just like i said you need to sell yourself you also need to make sure is this company right for me so is this company right for yourself so remember, you're going to be working at this place for maybe 40 hours, maybe 35 to 40 hours a week. You need to find out, is this the right place for me? Do I like their culture vibe and the benefits and how they will treat me, etc.? These are all things that you want to ask. What are your core values and principles that are just non-negotiable? List these out and make sure that the company actually, you know, aligns with what you believe in. And these are all the things that you should be considering since you don't want to work somewhere that doesn't fit with you since you're going to be investing so much of your time there it makes no sense to work somewhere where you don't like it so make sure that you prepare important questions that you want to ask at the end of the interview for the interviewer to see if this is the right company for you now when you actually finish building an application you want to make sure that you at least put one app onto the app store so what does this show well it shows how to actually upload an app to the app store which is a key thing in my opinion it shows that you know the Apple process in terms of building an app and then put it onto the store. If you want to learn more about how to put an app onto the app store, then check out my video, how to put an app onto the app store. <laughs> this will actually show you how to, you know, release your first app and handle versioning as well as submit it for review. And the final point I want to touch on is to have a bit of faith. Now, I'll be honest, this process is not easy. And even though I've given you all these steps, you're not guaranteed to get a job you have to realize that you're going to face a lot of adversity and you're sometimes going to send a hundred applications and you might not even get one reply back but one thing that you do need to do is you need to stick to it it's going to be tough and it's just something you're going to ride out keep faith and eventually if you keep on improving and trying your best you will get that role so that's everything in this video if there's any tips that you feel that like I missed out that you would give to someone who's a junior then I'd love to hear it in the comment section below also as well if you haven't as well I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces